uh, the second day of topic five. Um, two more identities, the applied truth identities, the uh, double angle identities. I'm dealing with. Okay, there's actually half angle identities as well. We won't get into today, but um, those will be all the identities that we go through. Okay, tomorrow or not tomorrow, but next year you'll be getting into many more. If I were you, I'd summarize these identities into your. Uh, on your graphing portfolio pages, or summarize them all on a separate note page, all the identities we've done. Um, maybe add them to that page where we had the unit circle and the triangle, where we had the Pythagorean identities. Put them all in there and add them to your portfolio at the end of the year, your graphing portfolio. Okay? Uh, the assumption that you've, you've started this, you have sine A plus B. I'm going to start with the, the angle sum identity for sine. So sine of A plus B is equal to sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Okay, so if I take that and I plug in theta for both A and B, so now I have sine of theta plus theta, which we also know is sine two theta. sine 2 theta. Sine 2 theta, I'm also plugging in theta here, theta there, for all the A's and the B's. And I have sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta. Or we can multiply in any order, so this could be read as sine theta cos theta plus sine theta cos theta. Or 2 sine cos theta. Or 2 sine theta cos theta. So, one of your double angle identities, sine of 2 theta, that means if you have the same angle twice, so for instance if I wanted to find the sine of um, 180, I could do sine of 2 times 90, and that would equal that. Yeah? Why is it 2 sine theta, not 2 cos theta? It's 2 sine cos. The multiplication carries through. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, you could write it as 2 cos times sine. Two cos Either way, okay, so 2 times sine theta, cos theta. Okay? Any questions there? <coughs> we do the same thing for cosine. So, plug that in. Cos A plus B. Cos A, cos B. Nice sine A, sine B. Well, I had a pretty good joke about sine cosine tangents. I'll see if I can find it. Put it up later. You guys will get a chuckle, maybe, if you know who it's about. Plug in theta for both A and B. That gives you cos 2 theta. That's cos theta times cos theta minus sine theta times sine theta. That's cos what? Squared theta. Good. Minus. Sine squared theta. Good. Okay. So that gives us cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And those are our two new identities. These are called the double angle identities. Hopefully, it's obvious why. Okay. Any questions on those? Okay. So with that being said, using the double angle identities, I want you to study example three on page 619 and complete questions eight and nine on top page 620. And you must use the identities to complete them. Okay, can I have your attention, please? Yes, sir. Double angle identity for sine 120. Uh, divide 120 in half, so you get sine 60. two times 60, right? Okay. So sine two times 60. Oops. In our parentheses here. All right, and so if we're using that, if you think back to 
Um, your formula there, that's equal to root 2, or you're trying to prove that it's equal to root 3 over 2, we could actually write 2 sine, or sine 2 times 60 as what? Yeah. 2 sine 60 cosine 60. Uh, two, t 2 sine 60 times cos 60. Okay. And we're trying to make sure that equals root 3 over 2. Sine 60 is what? Root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2. It's kind of odd. It's going to equal that. Oh. Cosine 60 oh. is? 1 half. 1 half. Yeah, 1 half of 2 is 1. So 1 times root 3 over 2 is root 3 over 2. That's what I got. Okay, so you end up with root 3 over 2 right here. These cancel. Root 3 over 2 equals root 3 over 2. We're good. Yeah? Where did the cosine 60 come from? Uh, that's our formula, right? Oh. Okay. Our double. So we know that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine cos. What's up, Zach? So you're left with root 3 over 2 equals root 3 over 2. You're using your formula. So I bet... I've heard two people ask that now, where the cosine came from. Remember, sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. Brooks, you're being a distraction. I apologize. Good? Yeah. Okay, moving on. Number nine. Show why cos 2x equals 2 cos x is not an identity by finding a value for x for which that is not true. Give me a value. Zach, what do you use? 60, so you said cos of 2 times 60. You're trying to see if that's equal to 2 cos 60. And that's cos of 120. And 60 is, what's cosine 60? Okay, so the question is, does cos 120 equal 2. One. Equal 1, excuse me. Does it equal 1? No. No, in fact, the only cosine that equals 1 is cosine 360. 0 times and, no, plus 0 plus n times 360. Good. So, cosine 120 is actually equal to Good. Well done. Okay. Hey, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah.